In this video we've got three absolute value functions and we want to explore the slope of the two lines. And uh, sometimes it'll get wider, sometimes it'll get narrower, um, but what we're going to start with uh, is the f of x equals absolute value of x. It's just a standard function, um, absolute value, and the vertex is going to be right here in the center, 0 comma 0. Um, to graph this one I've just picked a bunch of x values right here in the left column. I plugged them into my function, did all the math here, and then got my y values, and then I plotted each one of these points. There's five all together, and then here they are here. I connected all the points, and then we've got our v, our absolute value function, right there in the middle. Now, it's important to point out that um, the slope of this line is up one over one, so that's just going to be positive one. And then the slope of this line is down one over one. So that's actually a negative one, okay? Now, keep that in mind when we go into our two other problems. Over here, we've got r of x equals 2 over 3 times the absolute value of x. So I'm going to make this my green graph when I plot it, okay? Now, there's no h, there's no k other than the 0, 0, okay? We're not... We're not subtracting or adding inside the absolute value of ours. We're not subtracting or adding on the outside. So our vertex is going to stay right here in the center at 0, 0. But we have a number out in front of it, which is a. And then a controls the slopes of both of our lines that create the absolute value function. So um, this is going to be the slope of our line that's going off into the right. So we're going to start here in the center, 0, 0. That's our vertex okay but from there we're gonna go up two over one two three okay that's gonna be another point on our new absolute value function line um, from here up two over three more up two over three more and then you'll notice that we've got a new line forming there okay so that's the right side of my function now I want to go back, so we need the negative version of this slope, just like if you look at my first one right here, we had the positive version and then the negative version, well, now we have to do the negative version. So we go up 2 and then back 3. So up 2 and then back 3, and we'll do it up 2 and back 3 one more time. So now if I connect all these points, we've got our second line there. And this is going to be my positive 2 over 3. But this line over here is actually going to be my negative 2 over 3, right? Because from one point, we go down 2, forward 3. And that's going to be my negative slope. Okay, So now you'll notice that we've got our new absolute value function. So we're good to go there. Uh, let's check out our other one. Okay, Here we've got k of x equals negative 3 times the absolute value of x. We're going to do this one in blue. Okay, Same thing like before, nothing's being added or subtracted on the inside of the absolute value bars or on the outside, so our vertex stays right in the middle at, uh, oh, I'm not going to write that there, stays in the middle at 0 comma 0. Okay, And now this is going to be the slope of our line to the right. Uh, again, a represents our slope, so our slope is negative 3, so we could write that as negative 3 over 1. So from here, going to our right, we're going to go down 1, 2, 3, and then over 1. Down 3 over 1, down 3 over 1. Okay, connect those points, and there's our line that goes to the right. Um, that's going to be one version, so that's going to be our slope right here, and then we want the opposite sign of the slope. So uh, again, I'll refer to the first one. Uh, we had a value of 1 for the slope, but we needed a positive version and then a negative version. So back to this one, we have a negative version. Well, now we need our positive version. Starting from the vertex, we're going to go down 3, but then backwards 1. And then I'll show you why this is going to be the positive version in a minute. So again, go down 3, back 1, down 3 more, then back 1 connect these points and we've got another line there. Okay, Now, I said that this is our positive version. That's because we go up 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1, 1, 2, 3, over 1. So that's going to be a positive slope. 
and that's our new absolute value functions. Now it would be a good idea to make some observations on what made the absolute value function that normally looks like a V flip and become an upside down V. Um, and if you look closely our A became negative um, or it was given to us as a negative value so that's what actually made it flip. If you go back to our other one right here our A value was given to us and that was still positive so it stayed looking like a regular V. Now you want to think, well, okay, this one right here, the, the V actually kind of got wider, but in our other one right here, our V, although it was flipped, it actually got narrower and got a little bit skinnier. So why did that happen? Well, if you look back at this one, um, our A value was between zero and, um, well, let's see, we'll do A, our zero is less than a, which is less than um, 1. We'll just come up with this inequality. If it's ever between 0 and 1, we know that it's going to get a little wider. And then keeping that in mind also, if we know that our A, say if it was flipped, uh, say our V was flipped, we know that um, negative 1 is less than A is less than 0. If our A value is in there, um, we know that it's going to be a little bit wider as well. Now in regards to our um, graphs getting or our V's getting uh, narrower, uh, that means that we just can't have our A value inside this. So basically, if our, uh, if our A value is greater than 1, it's going to get narrower. So it would look something more like this, okay, or narrower or skinnier, whatever you want to call it. Um, on the other one, okay, over here, if we're flipping it, um, if our A value ended up getting less than negative 1, so um, it would basically just be getting even more narrower, like this case. Our A value is negative 3, so that's less than negative 1, so it gets narrower. If it was a positive 3, it would have been still narrower, um, but it just wouldn't have been flipped. Uh, so that's a little bit about um, slope and absolute value functions and how things get flipped or how things get wider and uh, how things get narrower.